Hey everyone, we're back with another progress update on the Dark Arrow 1. We've got a lot of projects going on, let's jump right in. Kind of an exciting update on the propeller for the engine. Uh, we got the prop controller in the mail. We ordered the propeller and the prop controller. We had them send this in advance so we could begin uh, integrating this unit with the electrical system. So we haven't really talked about the propeller much in previous updates, but uh, we're using an electric constant speed prop from Airmaster Propeller. Uh, it's specifically set up for the UO power engine that we're using, and it's a high speed configuration propeller. So we think it's gonna be a good fit for our engine and airframe combination. And then, yeah, we got the propeller controller here. So it's electrically uh, adjustable. And this guy takes care of pretty much all the propeller uh, control. You just pick your setting of flight. Uh, so take off, climb, cruise. There's a hold function. So you got a little bit more um, of a cruise control there for other flight regimes. And then there's a feather option. So you just use that knob to adjust your propeller. Uh, we'll probably do a video talking about this whole thing a little bit more detail, uh, pr propeller specific video, but yeah, excited to get this integrated with the rest of the electrical system. Next step is gonna be cutting a hole in the instrument panel uh, so we can bolt this guy in and then uh, wiring up all the wires to interface it with the rest of our electrical and avionics system. Uh, if anyone who's watching this has already used this type of propeller and installed one of these units, uh, leave a comment. I'm curious if there's any quirks or a little good things to know about installing this. So maybe we can learn from you. Here we are outside the airframe of the Dark Arrow 1 behind the cockpit. And this structure here is the shuttle back. You'll notice that it's made of fiberglass and that's because this is where all of our antennas need to go for the aircraft. One of our goals with the aircraft was not just to make it as aerodynamically clean as possible, but also aesthetically clean as well. In order to do that, we didn't want to have any pokey antennas sticking out the outside of the airframe. So, um, that's why we have been experimenting with our own in-house design for our antennas. For instance, here we have a custom-built comm antenna or the one that you use to talk to tower and other aircraft. Um, this antenna design is based off a PhD thesis that we've been following and we modified for the purposes of the comm frequencies. The way we uh, have been measuring the performance of this has been with this device here. This is a miniature vector network analyzer. In a nutshell, what it allows us to do is change different parameters about the antenna and see how that affects the performance. We'll see how it goes with this design, but we have a couple off-the-shelf solutions that we are also keeping in mind just to keep the project moving forward so that we aren't held up by trying to design a custom antenna, which is a lot of work. setting up for the negative G proof load test. And in preparation for that, I have to build a test fixture. Uh, you've already seen our positive G load test and the test fixture for that. Uh, so we need a similar test fixture to do negative Gs. Instead of building a new test fixture from scratch, we're trying to piggyback off the work that we've already done for the positive G load test. So what I'm doing is adding these legs onto the existing test fixture so that we can flip this thing over, set it right side up, and then the whole thing should uh, sit on these legs then at the correct angle for the test. Uh, the reason we're not just starting over from scratch is that uh, there was a lot of work that went into the first test fixture and just getting that to interface properly with the wing. Uh, there's a lot of hardware and tolerances and everything that uh, ended up consuming a lot more time than we expected. So. Uh, instead of redoing all that over again and wasting all that effort, we're gonna just try and uh, move forward with what we have. So I built these legs, uh, just cut them out of scrap plywood and attached them onto the uh, existing fixture. It might look a little bit funny. You can roast me in the comments about that, but it should work. Uh, the negative G load test isn't um, 
as high of load as the positive G load test. So uh, we don't need a crazy amount of structure to handle that. So this should work. Next steps are gonna be disassembling this so that we can paint it and then we'll reassemble it and flip the whole thing over and move on with the rest of the negative G load test. Okay, I'm over here at the router table. I machine out these big sections of foam. This is gonna be used for the negative G load wing test. So the reason that we're using this uh, foam is for a number of things. The first thing is that it helps us locate the bags in both the span wise and cord wise direction for the wing. So when we place them, we know exactly where they need to go. Uh, the other big thing is that it helps us create a more level surface for the bags to sit on so they have less of a tendency to tip or rotate off the wing itself which would be really bad and then the last thing is that it creates a nice uh, kind of protection barrier between the sandbags or the concrete bags and the wing itself so the wing is uh, fully carbon fiber and we don't want uh, stress concentrations from like say a little small rock between the bag and the wing itself so I'm gonna get the remaining sections of foam finished up. We only have a couple sections left and they're gonna be all done with that and ready to go for the negative G load wing test. We have the test fixture all set up and ready to go for the negative G proof load test. I'll walk you through the last key bits of progress we made on this. We've got the load pad here set up on the top surface of the wing to give us a level surface in the pitch direction so we can stack weight on this. One change we made between the positive G and the negative G load test is we labeled all the load stations. It's a pretty easy upgrade to make uh, and it just helps us keep track of all the weight as we're stacking it on here. Got the jacks all in position, so we machined out uh, little foam pads on there so that we have um, a good interface between the, the jack and the wing to distribute that load. And then we have this frame set up around the perimeter of the wing. And attached to the frame, we have our extensometers, just rulers clamped on there, and that allows us to track the deflection and twist on the wing as we're loading and unloading it. So it's just a nice extra piece of information for reference during the test. Text, test picture's all ready to go. Um, so yeah, beyond that, we're ready to test this. So stay tuned for that. We'll have that in another update. Alright guys, we're back here inside the cockpit with our wiring harness. The last time you saw this wiring harness, we had a trial fit inside of here, but now we have our click bond mounts and P-clips holding this portion of the bundle in place. And we really like the result we got. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've got little to no motion when we tug on it, which is what we like to see. And it's being held off the airframe so that under vibration conditions, this bundle will not rub across the airframe. So some of the things we're thinking about as we look at it here is uh, we wanna protect it from hazards like the occupants of the aircraft. So some simple things we could do there would be to add an expandable sleeve to this bundle, or potentially we could create a cover 
to completely shield it from the occupants. The next steps here will be to keep working back to the aft portion of the fuselage with our click bonds and P-clips so that we can continue mounting the wiring harness to the fuselage. By the way, thank you to all of you who have joined the Dark Arrow YouTube community. It means a lot to us. For those of you who haven't joined and you're wondering what it's all about, it's a place where we share a lot more information, including exclusive behind the scenes photo and video, early progress updates, and do live Q and A. If you want more Dark Arrow action, click the first link in the description below. All right, everyone, that's all we've got for you for this update, but we've got a lot more coming up. So if you don't wanna miss out, hit subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.